Hi, I'm Katie Halcrow with Power Up Prep, and I'm super excited today to take you through some tips and strategies to help you power up your ACT. If this is your first time with us, first, welcome. Second, check out the link below. There, you're going to find the ACT questions and the note sheets that you can do along with these videos. All right, so let's get those materials together and we're gonna be ready to power up. Okay, we're back. You're doing a great job. We have two sections down, English and reading down, science to go. So, well, science and math to go, but right now we're gonna do some science. And I wanna start by talking about some just general strategies for the science section. So strategy number one is probably going to sound familiar because it's a lot like what we talked about for reading. Yep, that's right. So strategy number one is do not read the passage or try to understand the experiment first. Instead, where are you gonna go? Yep, you're gonna go straight to the questions. Okay, so you have 35 minutes to answer 40 questions. And that is not enough time to read all of the experiments and then try and answer the questions. So you wanna go straight to the questions first because just like the reading section, these questions are asking about details. But in this case, in the science section, they're asking about specific data points. So you don't start by reading the passage or trying to figure out what's going on. You're just gonna go straight to the questions and then find your answer choices. Um, based on going straight to the questions and then looking back. So how do we answer those questions? Because in the reading section, there was a different order that we answered the questions. In the science section, that's a little bit different. So in the reading section, we answered certain questions before other questions. In the science section, we're actually going to do the questions in order. The reason that we're going to do questions in order is because the questions get harder as they go along. So the first three questions in any passage are going to be your easiest questions. So there are six passages total on the science section of the text of the test. And so the first three questions of each passage are going to be easier than the rest of the questions. And the last one to two questions on each passage are going to be harder. Um, and then the other thing that happens is that passage one as a whole is going to be easier than passage five or passage six as a whole. So even though passage five and passage six, those first three questions are still gonna be easier than the rest of the questions on the passage, passage five or six as a whole are going to be harder passages than passage one. So it makes sense to do the questions in order. So in order per passage and also doing it in the order of the passages as they come. Um, that said, let's say you're doing passage two and the last question of that passage is hard for you, like you can't figure it out, go ahead and take your best guess and skip it because it is a hard question. So you wanna make sure that you get to all of the easy questions that you can. So if you get to a hard question and you can't figure it out after about a minute, you're just gonna take your best guess and move on. Okay, so now when you're actually answering the questions, how do you do that? Well, we answer questions on the science test or the science section of the exam by playing the matching game. So when I say the matching game, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look in the question and we're going to find words or things that they tell us, like if the question says table one, then we would go to table one and match it. If the question gives us a specific piece of data, we're going to find where similar data is. So we're playing the matching game. When we're playing this matching game, what we're going to look at are charts, graphs, tables, diagrams, and equations. I'll say that again. We're going to look at charts, graphs, tables, diagrams and equations when we're playing this matching game because we're not going to read in the passage. We're not gonna scan in the passage. We're gonna go straight to those places because like I said before, almost all of these questions are asking about specific data points. And so if we go to those charts, graphs, table, <laughs> charts, graphs, tables, um, diagrams and equations, we're most likely going to find the answers that we need without having to do any reading. When we're looking at those places, so when we're looking at the charts, graphs, tables, diagrams, and equations, we also want to look at four key features of them. And those are headings, axis labels, keys, and asterisks or footnotes. 
So you want to look at these four things, headings, access labels, keys, and access and um, asterisks or footnotes because they give you important information about what's inside a graph or a table. Um, so you want to make sure that you see exactly the data that you need. And if you don't read a key, for example, you might not know that the dotted line means the sun and the straight line means, and like the solid line means the moon. So you need to be able to differentiate between the two if you're doing a particular question. So you wanna make sure you read that key. Same thing goes for axis labels or asterisks or headings. So they just tell you more information about what you're looking at. Um, finally, last thing is in terms of doing these questions, you can scan the passage, but only as a last resort. If the charts, graphs, tables, equations, and diagrams don't have the information you need, once you exhaust them, so once you look at everything and it's not there, then, and only then, you can scan back through the written passage to see if you can find what you need. And notice I said scan. You're not going to read it. You're just going to scan for a keyword, just like we did in the reading section. Okay, so those are our general overview. So we start by going to the questions. We don't read the passage or try and understand the experiment first. We're going to do the questions in order because they get harder as we go along. And then we're going to make sure that we look, look at those charts, graphs, <laughs> charts, graphs, tables, diagrams, and equations. And then within those, we look at headings, axis labels, asterisks, and, and footnotes, as well as keys to make sure we know what's going on there. One final thing that I'm just going to mention is that these passages in the science section can sometimes seem incredibly confusing. Like you might not know what's going on in the experiment and you might not even know how to pronounce some of the words in questions. That actually happens to me because the last science class I had was, well, it was before you were born, <laughs> which is sad for me. But anyway, um, the last science class I had was a really long time ago, but I can still score very well, like well into the 30s on the science section of the test because I play this matching game. You actually don't have to understand what's going on in an experiment, in like at least fully, in order to get the questions right. You just need to be able to analyze a graph, analyze data, and match it up. So don't be intimidated if you don't feel like you know any of the words in a particular passage. You don't have to know them. You don't have to understand what's going on in order to get questions right. All right, let's go on. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. We'd love to hear from you. Also, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss out on any of our curriculum or other tips and tricks that can help you power up your ACT.